morning, viewers. Welcome to our educational content. I remain yours on the way faculty member in the Department of Mass Communications, Kaila University of Nigeria. And today we'll be talking about one of the interesting uh, topics in research, which is research methodology. Now, research methodology is very fundamental. It is very essential component of research because the overall success of research depends on research methodology. It is the foundation. Just like so, we'll be looking at research methodology, and this is fundamental because research methodology determines whether the study will stand or it will fall. Just like somebody's building a house. If the foundation is not well laid, there is this possibility that maybe perhaps one day the house might collapse. So if you're conducting a study, you need an appropriate methodology. You need to anchor your research on a particular methodology that will assist you to answer the objective of your research question at the end. So, what are the things that we need to consider when you are conducting a research under research methodology? The first one is research design. Now, what is research design? Most people um, misunderstood research design to research methods. When we talk of research design, we are not talking about quantitative, qualitative, mixed method or triangulation. When we talk about research design, Research design entails the traditional approach of data generation, which could be positivist, constructivism, transformative, and pragmatism. This is where or how you establish your research design. So, research design basically comes from this uh, four worldview or what we call paradigms. Now, the first one, which is A, is research design. And when we talk of research design, there is a clear difference between research design and research method. What is research design? Research design is a, uh, a plan that helps you to achieve or to answer your research question. It's a plan approach that helps you to answer your research question. While research method, it is the strategy that you use to implement that plan. So, number A here we have research design. So, research design will not inform the choice of B, which is the worldview or the paradigm. Now, based on this worldview, we not inform the choice of C, which is either the research is taken from the positivist, from the constructivist, transformative, or pragmatism. Now, C will not lead to D, which means that it is based on this four parameters, positivism, constructivism, transformative, and pragmatism that will inform the choice of either you are going to adapt quantitative, qualitative, mixed method, or triangulation. Now, D will lead to E. So, if you are adapting quantitative, which means you are going to, your research design becomes the positivist uh, method of research design. Because the positivists, they believe in quantitative. They believe in pure scientific procedure. So, if you are using quantitative, then your research design will be informed based on the positivist worldview. Now, if you are doing a qualitative study, you are going to use what constructivism as a research design because the choice of one and um, qualitative of the study will be informed by constructivism which believe in qualitative. The constructive uh, approach, they believe that human understanding, human idea, human perception on a particular subject matter is vital. So they subscribe to this uh, qualitative approach. Now, if you are doing a study that has to do with maybe you are using two methods, for example, either survey and content analysis, you are doing what is called mixed method. Now, aside this, if your study is also based on literature review, which is also maybe, for example, a conceptual paper, 
that all the argument you are going to establish or articulate in your study are within the context of literature or existing literature in a particular area, you are going to adapt what is called transformative. And they believe in recent trends. They believe in issues that maybe sometimes people that are being uh, disenfranchised or people are being neglected in the society or some of the current trends or issues that need uh, serious investigation. For example, issues like lesbianism, issues like uh, maybe gay, issues like uh, transsexual and maybe uh, homosexual. So all these issues will attract a transformative uh, output so that you can be able to analyze them very well. Now, the last one is the pragmatic approach. This uh, scholars or worldview, they believe in mixed method research. They believe that a single research approach cannot give you what you are looking for. For example, if you are using quantitative and qualitative approach, which is mixed method, so it can be able to give you a good um, outcome at the end of the study. So basically, if you are doing your research design, you should look at it from the perspective of positivism, constructivism, transformative, or pragmatism. And aside that, when we talk of data collection, data analysis, interpretation, and validation, this can also lead to this because these are members that also constitute in establishing the essence of research and methodology. The next thing is research methods. Aside research design, you have what is called research method. And when we talk of research method, we are not talking about, we are not talking about quantitative, qualitative, mixed method, and triangulation. Now let's look at quantitative research. When we talk of quantitative research, it is an aspect of research that deals with statistical application in the course of conducting a study. Here, you are going to use maybe, uh, for example, you use questionnaire, or for example, you use some software that you can be able to analyze issues. And if you are using a single method in a study, it is maybe, for example, could be quantitative method, for example. Now, number two is qualitative. Now, qualitative uh, research method is a research method that does not involve statistical application. It deals with human understanding of a particular subject matter. It deals with maybe interviewing people to collect information about a particular subject matter where they interview them and they share their experience, their opinion, or they give you vital information concerning a particular phenomenon or concept. Now, aside qualitative, we have what is called mixed method. And mixed method is when we blend either quantitative and qualitative together in order to investigate a particular uh, issue. So here you are using two research methods. Maybe you are using content analysis and maybe a symbiotic analysis, for example. So once you adopt these two approaches, you are doing what is called mixed method research. And the last one is triangulation originated from the word triangle, which means you are going to, when you are doing three, or when you are having three research and methods, you are having what is called triangulation. This is one, then another method two, then another method three. So this is triangulation. So you have three methods. So if you are doing a study and you are using three methods, for example, survey, FGD, and maybe um, in-depth interview, these three methods will lead to what translation. So you can either use one method or you use what is called mixed method or you use what is called translation. So the next thing is population of the study. And when we talk of population of a study, we are looking at the theoretical specific, specified aggregation of a survey element. Here, when we talk of population of the study, we are looking at those individuals, those subjects, those elements that constitute part of the study. Because as a researcher, you need to have a total number of people which at the end you are going to select them to form part of the study. So basically we have two types of population. We have the target population and the study population. So at the level of target population, we 
are looking at the total numbers of individuals that are going to fit into that theoretical specification of the universe. For example, if a researcher is interested in conducting a study on the listenership of um, radio uh, in Canon, the person can decide to select Freedom Radio. Now, if you choose Freedom Radio, there are different people that are listening to this um, station. Maybe they could be children, they could be male, they could be female, or they could be more people. So, you need to have a specific target audience that you are looking at. Because if you say free, uh, listenership or freedom radio, there are too many. So, it becomes difficult for you to generate a data that we uh, specify in that particular uh, study. So, you need a study population where you can realistically select those who will be part of the study. Now, you can look at it from the demographic. You can look at it from the age. If you are interested at looking at the listenership of freedom radio, then you can decide to say the study is limited to maybe the uh, the male. And if they are, you are looking at the male uh, this is gender, then from which age to which age? Maybe you are looking at it from 25 to 30. Now it becomes more specific for you to generate uh, data. So the study population is that component of the population that you can realistically obtain information that will represent the target population. In another example, if you are conducting a study or maybe looking at the perception of um, people towards maybe COVID-19 vaccine in Kano State, for example, and considering the fact that Kano has 44 local government, and this 44 local government can become your target population. And considering the inability of a researcher to cover the entire 44 local government, you can decide to limit it to what maybe a few local government, or you can decide to pick two local government that you want to concentrate on. So that becomes the two local government that you selected will become a study population. The next thing is the sample size. Now, when we talk of sample size, it is a subset or sub part of the population. As a researcher, you need to have a what? You need to have a sample size where you can draw your uh, subject that you can be able to either distribute questionnaire or interview them. So, the sample size is that small elements that you can be extracted from the population. Now, when you are conducting a study, you need a sample size. For example, you are conducting a study using maybe the student of mass communication Skyline University, and maybe there are 200 in number. And out of these 200, you can decide to uh, go with a sample size of 150. So you are going to distribute questionnaire to 150 uh, students. And in conducting a research, you need to make sure that your sample size have these two requirements, whether the sample size must be representative and it must be adequate. For example, if these 200 students that form part of your sample size, if you're going to pick them and at the end you just go with 50 out of these 200, this is not representative. Or at the end you are going with just 60, it is not. So maybe out of these 200, you are going with maybe 100. This is half, at least, is representative. Or you can decide to go with 150, which is adequate enough. So you must make sure that you balance your sample site with those who are going to participate or involved in that uh, study. And know that the sample site should be drawn based on either the problem statement or the research question or the objectives of the study. This is how well you can be able to uh, draw your sample size. Now, the next thing is the sampling techniques. Now, sampling techniques guide a researcher for you to be able to select people who are going to be part of your study. Now, basically, this procedure helps the researcher so that at the end, you can be able to select people that form part of your study that people can say that it is not devoid of biases. 
So we have two types of sampling procedure. We have probability and non-probability sampling. Now, under probability sampling, we have simple random, systematic random, stratified sampling, and cluster sampling. So at the level of simple random sampling, this is an aspect of sampling that interests a researcher selecting or those people who form elements or part of the study has an equal chance of being selected because you are simply selecting them randomly. So here, every element or subject has an equal chance of being selected or being part of the study. Now, in systematic um, random sampling, it is a sampling that involves sampling by a fixed item or portion. For example, you are doing a study and you are using content analysis. You want to study the manifest content of a media messages in a particular newspaper. Now, you can decide to use systematic random sampling, whereby you start uh, picking your edition from two. You should now say, okay, after two, you leave interval of three. You say two plus three, you pick five. You say five plus three, you pick eight. You say eight plus three, you pick 11. So it will continue like this. So you already fixed that, okay, after three, the next number you are going to pick. This is systematic random sampling. Now we have stratified random sampling. And stratified random sampling is drawn from a homogeneous subset of a population. And it's drawn where you have uh, some of the characteristics that the uh, subject or the respondent possess are similar in nature. And this stratification it is being done by what is called strata or strata. And the last one is the cluster sampling. Cluster sampling is a method of sampling that has to do with geographical distribution. For example, if a researcher is conducting a study in Kano State, now Kano State has three senatorial uh, zones. We have Kano North, Kano Central, and Kano South. So the researcher can decide to cluster this Kano into three senatorial zones. Uh, zones and then from there you can be able to pick the zone that is going to be part of the study. So if you are conducting a study and you are using quantitative research method, it is proper for you to also use the sampling techniques that will come from the probability sampling because the probability sampling is a method of sampling that also deals with mathematical guidelines. So since quantitative is talking about the application of statistical methods or uh, tools, it is quite uh, understandable that if you are using a quantitative research method, your sampling should be taken from the probability, uh, any of these probability sampling methods. Now, the non-probability sampling method, it is a method that does not involve uh, statistical uh, application or mathematical guidelines. It revolves around maybe extracting information that has to do with people's understanding of a particular subject matter. And under non-probability sampling, we have what is called convenience sampling, we have progressive sampling, we have casual sampling, and we have slow-boat sampling. So at the level of convenience sampling, it is when maybe the researcher is distributing uh, or selecting the participant or the respondent based on availability. Maybe, for example, you are a student of mass communication scanner in this Nigeria, and maybe you know we are, we are conducting the study, and the study is about level 100 students, and you know where they are having their lectures, so you just go there conveniently, and then you can be able to pick them, those who you want to be part of the study. Now, when we talk of opposing sampling, it is based on the researcher's judgment. Here, the researcher can select those that will be part of the study based on some of the criteria that he or she feel some people meet the demand of the study. For example, if you want to interview certain um, category of people, you can decide to select because you know if you select Mr. ABC, they can be able to give you what you are looking for. So it is known as judgmental because it is based on the researcher's judgment. Now, the casual sampling is a method of sampling whereby 
Anybody you meet by chance or in the street can just be part of the study. Here you don't have a target specified people that are going to be part of the study. Any person you meet on the street can become or can form part of the study. The next one is snowball sampling. And snowball sampling is also refers to referrals. That is whereby maybe you are conducting a study and you identify one person who is knowledgeable, knowledgeable enough about the subject matter. And you don't have uh, other people that can also uh, give you information on the subject matter. So once you identify the first person, you interview the person and you ask the person to lead you with another person. The person will now connect you to another person. Then you are doing snowball. That is moving from first person to second person, the second person will lead you to the third person. For example, if you are conducting a study maybe on the issue of uh, lesbianism, and if the researcher is interested to study the sign, maybe if a lady wear a chair on her left leg, maybe it's a sign of communication. So you identify she is a member. Once you see that uh, chair on her left leg, you know that she is a member, but you have access to only one lady. So after you interview this first person, you now ask the lady to lead you to another person that who is also a member. So you now go to the second person. So automatically you know that any lady that maybe wear the chair, maybe that is their sign of communication. So they will keep linking you to their police until you get the number of people that you want to be part of the study. So thank you very much. This is uh, some of the components that are on that methodology. So in our next episode, we'll be looking at maybe, uh, we'll be looking at validity, reliability, and data gathering instrument, and other interesting and component of research methodology. Thank you.